Hello there. It's nearly Christmas, the most Christmassy time of the year. Isn't that right, ghost of Christmas present? I'm a spooky Christmas ghost. That's right, you certainly are. I'm gonna do a poo in your stockings. You are? To teach you a lesson about commercialism at Christmas. It's the lesson we can all learn from. My poos are full of pogs and Lego. Thanks for the heads up. They hurt when they come out. Yeah. I think I need more fiber in my diet. Or less Lego. Or less fiber. <laughs> I can't remember which way around it is. I think it's less Lego. Nah. Okay, uh... <sighs> Uh, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I made the alien foods from my previous video, How to Cook a Christmas Dinner for an Alien. So if you haven't seen that, the link is on the screen now. Uh, and you should probably watch that first so this actually makes sense. So I'm going to go through the process of making each of the foods, but there's a lot of information to get through, so this will be more of an overview. What? What? Did you say stocking poo? No, I said overview. Oh. As you were. Yeah, thanks. Oh, I'm going to go. Great. So I won't go into too much detail, as I've covered a lot of the techniques in previous tutorial videos. Anyway, let's start with the materials list. The materials list. Open me, you idiot! Merry Christmas! I wanted to wrap up the materials for you for Christmas, but I got confused and I wrapped up myself. Hey. I've lost my body. I think I used it to wrap up the box. Of course you did. My torso was made of wrapping paper. Why would you do that? Uh, I just wanted to do something nice for Christmas. You jerk! What? Give me your severed head in a box wrapped in your innards? Yes. It's a festive treat! It's very generous of you. I think this might be my last Christmas. <coughs> uh, as my last act, I'd like to read the materials, please. Sure. Off you go. You will need scrap plaster scene, kitchen foil, monster clay, PVA glue and tissue paper, expanding foam, craft knife and sculpting tools, plain flour, a liquid latex, oh kissy kissy, oh my last wish is kissy kissy. And a uh, liquid latex thickener, hot glue gun, and uh, other craft glue. Some red wool, talcum powder. No, not malcolm powder. I told you he's stinky. Yes, that's better. Red and yellow acrylic paints. Polymorph plastic. A compressor and airbrush. Oh, fancy. Stop motion armature wire. Duct tape and a masking tape. All of the tapes, yes. Cardboard and pillow stuffing. Oh, it's fluffy. Okay, I go now. A little help. Now for the big, long method. Okay, so let's begin with the flesh nut. So the first thing I did was to take a rugby ball and wrap that in kitchen foil, and then coated this in warmed up monster clay to create the base shape of the nut. I then used watered down PVA glue and strips of tissue paper to paper mache on top of this base shape. I waited for this to dry, and then I did another layer. Then once it had all dried, I cut the paper mache along the length of the nut to create the two halves. Then I filled the insides of the nut with the expanding foam and spread it out with a spoon. I did this to both halves of the nut and left them to dry. Then this formed the base skeleton structure of the nut. If you use expanding foam, make sure you use it in a well-ventilated space and wear gloves as it sticks to everything and it's horrible. I added another layer of clay to our base shape to make it a bit larger. I used monster clay to create the lip shapes on the nut and used the sculpting tools to blend them in and shape them. And I did this on both sides of the nut. So I mixed some liquid latex with liquid latex thickener and then put a coat of this on the monster clay nut shape. I waited for this to dry, and then I applied a second coat. So once this had dried, it was time to remove the latex skin from the monster clay sculpt. So cover the latex skin in talcum powder so it doesn't stick to itself, then cut the nut all the way around with a craft knife or scissors, and peel the two halves of the skin off of the sculpt. I added some thickened liquid latex to the cut line of the skin, and then I waited for this to dry. I painted the whole of the skin of the nut with watered down red acrylic paint, and then dabbed away the excess of the paint with some kitchen roll. I waited for the paint to dry, and then I coated the nut with unthickened liquid latex to seal the paint in. Then I made a mix of watered down darker red paint, which I mixed with a little bit of liquid latex, and ran this through the airbrush, painting the insides of the lip and around the bottom of the nut. I then jumped back onto the inside of the nut and gave the expanding foam a coat of liquid.
liquid latex. I dipped cotton wool into liquid latex and used this to form the gums around the top of the nut. Once this had dried, I gave the gums a coat with watered down red paint and then removed the excess with kitchen roll again. And then I used this same method on the expanding foam inside the nut and once it had dried, I coated the whole thing in liquid latex again. So the next step is to put more of our red paint and liquid latex through the airbrush again to spray on the inside of the nut and then I sprayed on another layer in a slightly fleshier tone. I softened some polymorph plastic in hot water and then molded it into teeth shapes for the nut. So many teeth! And then I gave all of the teeth a wash of yellow acrylic paint. Once they were dry, I glued them onto the gums of our hot glue gun. And then I blended in the point where the teeth joined the gums with some of our thickened liquid latex. So to make the tendrils that held the jaw shut, I hung up a load of strands of red wool, dipped these in liquid latex, and then waited for them to dry. In the meantime, I got some shorter lengths of red wool, separated these apart to create strands, then I dipped the strands in liquid latex and spread them apart on the inside of the nut to create veins. Once the lengths of hanging wool were dried, I cut them down to size and glued them to the inside of the nut, and then onto the other side to seal up the jaw, and then finally added some more strands of red wool dipped in liquid latex. And there we have the flesh nut. I also glued on some brown hair around the base of the nut to make it look a little bit more gross. The skin just actually sits on the papier-mâché shell so I could pull the lips back whilst I was filming. And then next, I moved on to the stone inside the flesh nut. So I built a base for this out of scrap plaster seam wrapped in kitchen foil, making sure to leave a hole in the middle. I then used monster clay to sculpt the shape of the stone on top of the foil. I then coated this with thickened liquid latex, waited for it to dry, and added a second coat. Now once all the latex had dried, I dusted it with talcum powder and then peeled the skin off the sculpt. At this point the skin was quite flimsy, so I added another coat of thickened liquid latex to the inside. Once this had dried, I trimmed around the base to tidy it up a bit and then stuffed it with some of our pillow stuffing. Next to paint the stone. So I coated it with another watered down mix of red acrylic paint and then used kitchen roll to remove the paint from the high points. So once this had dried, I went in again with some more red paint to emphasize the low points and pick out some of the detail. I covered it all with liquid latex to seal in the paint. Once dry, I made a mix of flesh tone paint with liquid latex and lightly brushed this on the raised points and the ridges. And then finally, I used another dark red paint mix in the airbrush to emphasize some of the key parts like the hole. So for the final piece of the flesh nut, I made another base out of scrap plaster scene and then wrapped this in kitchen foil and then sculpted on top of this with more monster clay. I then mixed some thickened liquid latex with red paint and gave it a couple of coats of this. On the back of a flat surface, I painted a lot of rectangle shapes with our red liquid latex. When dry, I rolled these off to make the tendrils. Using a purple paint and latex mix, I painted the recesses on the inside of the nut. I I dusted it with talcum powder and then removed the skin from the sculpt and then stuffed it with more pillow stuffing. Using the airbrush, I sprayed more of the purple paint mix onto the model to give it a bit more of an organic feel than I achieved with the brush. And then once this had dried, I glued the tendrils onto all the recessed areas. I added more liquid latex to the base of the tendrils to cover up the seam of the glue and then waited for it to dry. Next is the potato parasite, which I sculpted the base shape for out of monster clay, then covered in two coats of our thickened liquid latex. I made a mix of liquid latex and flour to create a paste and then used this to add texture to the center of the parasite. I then waited for this to dry, sprinkled it with talcum powder, and I trimmed the excess from the underside of the base just before I removed the sculpt from the latex skin. I then cut seven lengths of our armature wire and then bent over the ends on each of these so they were rounded and then glued the other ends into a round cardboard base. I wrapped this base in duct tape and then wrapped the arms in masking tape. This acted as the stop motion armature for the parasite. So then I put the skin on the armature. I then used more flour and liquid latex to cover up the base and seal up the duct tape and then to add more texture along the arms of the parasite. Once this had all dried, I covered this in watered down red paint and let this drip into all the holes and recesses and then removed the paint from the raised points with kitchen roll again. And then I coated the parasite with liquid latex to seal the paint in again, but I forgot to film this. Onto the hand vegetable. So I sculpted the bulb and the hand out of monster clay and then coated both of these in multiple layers of thickened liquid latex. Once dry, coated these with talcum powder and then removed the latex from the sculpt. I then used our armature wire to make a skeleton for the hand. I cut a piece of wire for each of the fingers and the thumb and then a circle for the palm. I bent the finger end ends over and then wrap the opposite ends around the circle and strengthen these joints with polymorph plastic. I put the armature inside the hand and stuffed the hand with pillow stuffing. I got a patch of liquid latex that I'd let dry separately and cut this down to size and glued it to the bottom of the hand. I then sealed up the seam with more thick and liquid latex and then painted another watered down red base coat onto the hand. I again used liquid latex to seal the paint. I took another dark red paint and latex mix and I ran this through the airbrush to darken the hole and the stump of the hand. I then took more strands of red wool, dipped them in latex and put them around the hole of the hand. I made some fingernails out of polymorph plastic and painted them yellow, and then I glued these onto the fingers with some of our craft glue. Once the glue had dried, I covered it with thick and liquid latex. I suspended the fleshy ball and then hung threads of red wool and liquid latex to create the veins. And I did the same to the base of the hand. And finally, the spore sprout. So I sculpted the sprout out of monster clay and mixed some green paint into some thick and liquid latex and painted this onto the sculpt. Once it was dry, I used a knife to score down 
the back of the sculpt and remove the latex skin from the monster clay. Using the armature wire, I made a skeleton for the spore sprout. I placed this inside the skin and stuffed it with pillow stuffing. I then glued the slit at the back of the latex together with our craft glue, holding it in place with masking tape whilst the glue dries. And then once the glue had dried, I sealed it with more green latex. I added a watered down coat of dark green paint to pick up some of the recesses and then painted over the high points with a lighter color. And then I sealed this all with latex. And then finally, I made some really tiny teeth with polymorph plastic and then glued these into the mouth of our spore sprout with our craft glue. And finished. We've got the flesh nut, the stone inside the nut, the middle of the stone, potato parasite, the hand vegetable, and the spore sprout. We've added sprout leaves. I'll just go get materials list back in. Oh, I'm good. I go this way. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh dear. Where am I going? Um, hello? Anyone? I think I need a wee, but I'm only a face. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to say thank you to my newest Patreons and YouTube channel members for helping to support this video. And they are Kaiteko, The Awesome YT, David Little Jr., I Name, Lantu, and Angle Marie 23. So thanks so much for your support. If you, like these lovely people, want to help support my channel, then head on over to my Patreon page when you can pledge to support and receive perks in the process. Anyway, I hope you all have a very merry Christmas. Thank you, okay, bye. <laughs>